Okay, so... Yeah, so far, less than ideal kind of, a uh, kind of encapsulates, defines pretty much everything with D-Team. Go figure. So now, welcome to the transporter room. Um, where's Vi? I don't see her. She could have woken first and wandered off. Sigma! Sigma! Huh? It's after midnight now. What? Tell me the year turned over. It's no longer the year 2028, but... 2029. How long have we been asleep then? My last memory was ten and a half hours ago. You're talking about the vote at 1330? Yes, but that doesn't mean we've only been sleeping though. We could have woken up several times. You're saying the amnesia drug made us forget. Well, better start looking for Fi. Yes, you're right. Hi, Gab. At least Gab has survived so far. The last of the rooms. That's fine. Where'd she go? Welcome to the transporter room. Zero. I can only assume you are searching for something. If you'd like to learn, yeah, the poor dog about, deserves better. Do as I say. Damn it. So, what are your orders? First, I shall explain the room to you. As the name suggests, this room contains a device called a transporter. It was discovered roughly 140 years ago, in the year 1888, at the South Pole. A German expedition was exploring the area. At one point, they became lost, and subsequently stumbled upon it. The device was carefully transported to their homeland and researched in secret. What they eventually uncovered was the fact that the device was not made by man. Perhaps it came from a distant planet or some alternate world. Regardless, they determined the intelligence that created it far surpassed that of humans. Despite not understanding how it worked, they figured out what it was used for. This device is capable of transporting things through space-time. Hence why it was named the Transporter. Yeah, Art these are not termites. Destruction is much different from what you'd normally expect. If you look toward the back left corner, you'll see something resembling a tree root. This is the nucleus of the transporter, and controls its function. And to your right, you should be able to see two objects that look like beds. These are called input pods. Look further right. The two objects similar to Crusades are the export pods. In the but we do get bug talk. Inside is oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, a variety of chemical elements that exist on Earth, stored individually. You use it as follows. First, place the material to be transferred. 
transferred into the input pod. We'll call it X to simplify matters. Next, select the location of transfer on the pod console. Pulling the lever will cause the input pod to begin scanning. This scan reads the exact placement of each atom that makes up Object X. The obtained data travels through space-time directly to the transfer point's nucleus. That nucleus will then analyze it. It will send the necessary elements from the material tank to the export pod and recreate Object X's original form precisely. Essentially, it acts as an atomic-level 3D printer. A massive amount of energy is required to do a transfer. Once a transportation has occurred, it takes roughly 10 months to recharge. The device cannot be used during that time. A variety of objects can be placed in the same pod, however. In order to transfer a human... Yes, yes we can. We can print body parts. ...one body within it. Two or more people cannot go into a single pod. It is very difficult. This machine back in 2009. It had been stored in a U.S. research facility. American troops had confiscated it after the German loss during World War II. My explanation ends here. There is a special characteristic about this device, however. This transporter is not simply a device that allows you to teleport. What is transferred is only the atomic data. The object itself does not get transported. Furthermore, that data travels through space-time. It does not just go to the past or present, but also to other histories. Now, my instructions. Currently, no power runs through the transporter nucleus. It is completely stopped. If you are able to restart it, you may obtain that which you desire. Well, I know you'll do your best. <coughs> Good luck to you. So essentially, that nice long drawn out explanation basically says we can put something in those pods and copy it and send that copy to space somewhere else in space time. That's basically all that we really said there. And if we want to send a person, we can only send one person in the pod and it would take 10 months to recharge. So, you know, now that we got that, I gotta find a whole bunch of things. Whole bunch of these. I don't recall if we get an actual explanation about the aliens. I do not recall. Can't look over here. Yeah, apparently Zero owns the History Channel, such as it is. Okay. 
go. Okay, where are you? I know there's one screen. I, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. We have to tap each one of these cards to this to activate said card. Sigma's just gonna count. For a little while, anyway. Even Sigma is tired of this. So, now we have a book. Let us take a look at the holographic book. equals zero. Hmm. Hell, that, that's fantastic. Very useful book, that. And now we've got Five symbols, three birds, a flower, and a person. So, now what we need to do is figure out the value of the rest of these cards. Using this little machine here. So you know that the moon card here is bigger than the, or stronger than that, the bullseye card. Oh, what else we got? Two people. Also stronger than bullseye.
What about a person in two moons? Stronger than a flower. Single bird? Single bird equals single bird. That didn't help. Come on. This is supposed to be cement. There we go. Bird is also bigger than a flower. It's kind of random which, uh... Which... Um card it's going to play against you. So, star in circle is not bigger than flower. Not sure if that counts as a pentagram or not. Eh, maybe. And then the laughs at us. But that is bigger than the bullseye. So if that can be a pentagram, okay, the power of Satan's bigger than a bullseye. Got it. But it is not bigger than a bird. Birds are bigger than Satan. Or at least stronger. But I think we knew that. So that's bigger. But it's bigger than a bird. Nope. It is not bigger than a bird. How about a lone person? Nope, flowers kill people. Unless the people have moons on their side. Okay. So you see you're supposed to get this, you know, eventually. You're supposed to go through this a whole lot. Figure out which ones are which, etc. Which, yes, you will, you can go through that and write down and compare and figure out which ones are bigger than which other ones. So let's see. Let's see, we've done that. And after we do that, just doing it once would have been enough. As flowers kill people. Flashbacks. To my icon. So basically, they have a base 13. I guess you could say basically base 12. Counting system, and instead of just numbers, they have symbols. Picked up pictographs basically. And if you look at it, 
when you have two symbols next to each other, it doesn't mean you add them. It means you, you know, multiply them, if you look at this. Anyway, each one's a number from 0 to 12. We know that the little curly Q sperm looking thing is a zero from the earlier section. But using what we did just now with that little with that little uh, card game and this, you should be able to determine which cards are which numbers. Mostly. We don't know what one is because I think one is, let's see. Let's see. But after you sit here and do this for a while, you eventually come out with Okay, let's see. When to zero. One is not even on that chart. Two, yeah, two is the moon. Three is the human by himself. So four is two moons together. Five. Five is the star. Pentagram. Whatever. Let's see. Six is two times three, so that would be human and moon together. Seven is the flower. Eight is three moons. <coughs> Nine is three times three for two humans here. Of course, two humans get to be the nine in this game. Ten would be the star and moon. Eleven is a prime. So that is a card we do not see here. But twelve is three times four. It could also be six times two, but you get the same answer either way. A human two moons. So let's see, we have one and eleven. Question. So now we get to solve it. Now I wrote it down. We know that's that is that. One is this. Remember how weak it was to everything. The bullseye. Two was moon. Three. Person. Double. Get over here. Double moon. Five. No, the birds. No, five was the birds over here. Five's here. What am I thinking? There. Eight is those. Three times three is here. Five times two is here. No, wait. That's seven. So flower was seven. What am I thinking? And twelve there.
There we go. And that opens up chapters 3 and 4, now that we know how they counted. Or at least how they depicted that they're counting. In order to operate the nucleus, four cards must be placed on the sensor. The Alien Society has two methods of expressing numbers. By converting the number displayed by the nucleus to a second format, you figure out what cards to place. So essentially, we're going to be dealing with different bases. In an odd, odd um, counting system. Go figure. We're basically, I believe, it's going to be turning this base 13 into base 10 or something like that. Anyway. We did all that to get Decagon reels. Reels with 12 sides. And then we get some with Tridecagon Reels. So it wasn't 12 and 10, it was 12 and 13. Which have four things. So. Now that we have done that, I want to push that button. Let me push the button. We have to wheel all the way around here. And now we have this. Yeah, remember what happens when people push buttons around this place? You say you don't want Sigma to get blown up? I mean... You can shoot for him not getting blown up if you want, but, you know. So, bird, bird, bird. Which would be 11, 11, 11, 7, and 3. Now that we've done that, we get new stuff here to read. Yep, if you line up symbols in a row, we, the nucleus symbols must be multiplied together to obtain the answer. The intelligent beings in the alternate world have 13 fingers and multiple arms. Which is why they count base 13. So anyway... We have, they need to be multiplied together. Let's see, 11 times 11 times 11 times 7 times 3. Seven thousand nine hundred and fifty one.
Oh, let's see. We need 27,000. Two. Seven. Nine. Uh, one. Click lever. And get ourselves an interesting little thing there. That piece of information. We can now come over here. Is it come over here? There we go. And let's see. Okay. Yes, but... Now announcing the current casualties. C-Team, Carlos, Junpei. Q-Team, Q, Mira, Eric. D-Team, Fine. These six are now deceased. What? It can't be... Gee, I think we've seen that side of this timeline before. Thank you for participating. This isn't what we wanted to happen. We didn't want this at all. You tricked us, Zero. This is a lie. It, it's gotta be. I refuse to believe this is true. Sigma! Hey, Phi! Where the hell are you? Are you trapped somewhere? If you can't speak, just, just make a noise! Please, Phi! Please! Answer me, damn it! That's an interesting flash. Diana! Hey, what's wrong? Are you all right? You okay? Yes. 
Thank you. And Fi? This door will never open again, then. Forever trapped. Get used to this whole idea. Why did Akane leave alone? No idea. There's... There's no way to tell what happened over in Ward C. We only know one thing. Carlos and Junpei are dead. That's it. So, you believe the announcement? I don't think they know about the bomb. This is not the timeline they ex they uh, explored that room in. If what it said earlier is true, then that means Q Team is dead as well. But unlike C Team, we can figure out exactly how Q Team died. They were executed. Likely. Yep. Carlos needs a hand. Well, he needs a neck now, too. Managing to cut his throat open with the fire axe. I believe you picked Q Team then, right? Yes. But and Junpei I... went to pieces. I know. You just did as the note suggested. The real betrayer is. Carlos. Not good. It's almost time for us to get injected again. Why would you still be we getting don't have injected, time to waste. Sigma? Come with me. The game is over. Sigma? What are you doing? The X door will never open again. Now, all we can do here is just wait to die. Wait, you don't mean you're planning to transport. What other choice do we have? We have one, to wait for Akane. I'm sure the police or a rescue Sigma. team will... We can't count Did on Did you that. forget about something here? But why? This is the tree form timeline then. Listen to me, Sigma! This is not the time for pointless arguing. We are escaping this horrible history. We're going to where Phi exists. Yeah, you're at the mercy of the riders, man. Sigma? I've selected the transfer point. All we have to do is pull this lever. Then we need to run to the input pods. Wait! I'm going to go even if you aren't. What? I'm starting it. You ready? Sigma, you kind of forgot an important part of what Zero told you about these pods. A very important part. Really, really important part here, at least for what you're saying. I like how don't transport leads to her just wrecking the machine. Diana! What are you- This has to be Zero's trap. A trap? Don't you think so? Zero's the one who made us start this thing. If we transport now, we'll be doing exactly what Zero wants. What in the... Oops. I, I don't know what's going on, but... We haven't exploded anything in a few sure minutes. we should get out of here. Let's go, Diana. I don't think we're getting the, uh... I don't think the warranty's gonna be any good on those.
Yeah, I think that's going to void the warranty. Sigma? It's after 0130. Yeah. Seems it is. You're what? Not there surprised. might be a little bit more than a dent there. We didn't get injected with the drugs. A little bit no, more than just. I remembered you know. the announcement from earlier. We're gonna need some duct tape at least to put it back the together. Has now been concluded. <sighs> oh. <sighs> the game's already over. So. It'll be fine. Akane will come back. I wonder. <laughs> I'm not so sure I believe that. You want to know what the great thing about playing this game is? I can lean back in my chair for 15, 20 minutes at a time and just cross my hands over my chest or, you know, lean back and get comfy for several minutes at a time. Ah, fireworks are still going. Great. You may not be able to hear it, but I can hear fireworks going off. That one you should have heard. 100% orange juice is interesting. I'll say that. It is very much a board game. And you're going to need other people to play it with. And you're going to be on you're going to want to be on voice chat with them to cut around because it's a, it's pretty much a standard board game. So, See if I can find that on the flow chart somewhere. Well, that's just the kill button. There we go. I haven't actually played Battle Block Theater, so I can't tell you anything about it. 100% orange juice Sigma, is very much doing? a st pretty standard board game, but very anime inspired. So let's point out the critical part, the critical flaw in Sigma's thought that they can just transport out of here. Okay, let's go. How could he note how could he not notice he was missing an eye? You can say it's either really, really advanced prosthetic that actually gives him the uh that actually gives him the ability to think he's blinking. Or, much like Kay's suit, since he's had it so long he didn't even really notice he wasn't blinking. One of the two. And poof! We are kind of stuck because, well, we can only really pick the new fragment because we completely jump out of that fragment. But anyway... Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it would just didn't register in the brain. Maybe the maybe the oddity of it wouldn't have just registered. Or like I said, it's a really good prosthetic. Or more likely it's just a big plot hole. Yeah, one of the two. One of the three. But anyway. We have a nice straight fragment we have to go down here. Which means we're not gonna be making many choices.
the door of truth. But eventually we will come back and realize the gaping flaw in Sigma's logic here. And I'm specifically referring to the transporter. Did it really work? There's an even bigger plot well, hole here that I will get into pods, when it becomes relevant. And we came out of not here specifically, but the export pods with the series in general. Diana, look at your watch. Because time travel. 1805. Well, we climbed into the pods around 1:30 in the morning on New Year's. So, we went back in time? But huh. It could be possible that it's 1805 on January 1st, though. Good point. But it also means it could be two or three days off. Or even three or four years. There's no way to know the exact date or time. Even what we see on this watch... ...could be fake. We have no idea. Um, Sigma, can I ask you something? Would you really want to eat you cheese made out of this You were the one who prepared pot? everything on the input console, right? Yes. Where exactly did you set it to? What do you mean, where? The transfer point for the transporter. Uh... I don't know. What? It's not my fault. We didn't have time. I, I, I couldn't read any of the text on the display, so... I just picked random randomly. A uh, random? Brilliant, Sigma. It it doesn't matter. It's still highly likely we came out in an alternate history. And if that's true... If I could be here... Bye! Bye! Doesn't look like she's here. I mean, I could go with the obvious this joke is... and go, Fies there, and here, and a little bit over here. Tell me you're safe. Where are you? Answer me! Um, Sigma? I'm not really sure, but... Maybe... The history we're in... What was that? It won't open. Anyway, let's find a way out of here. We'll talk later. Yeah, this is slightly, ever so slightly annoying. Just a little bit. Because it's too freaking picky. But not terrible. It is not a terrible puzzle. But this, this whole thing gets a little picky for my taste. Anyway. Come on. A three-pronged outlet, a hair dryer with some massive freaking prongs. That is some big prongs for a hair dryer. So obviously we can't plug the hair dryer in there yet. <laughs> 
So we need more water to try to make the thing that's trapped in here come out. However, if you notice, it kind of looks like we're standing in this pool. But we're not. Which is a good thing because that didn't exactly water. Slightly dangerous there. Just a little. And a music box that says runs on the water. And a lock. And I need a new sheet of paper for very soon. For very obvious reasons. Yeah, we could do that. And nine buttons here. Nope. Random pressing doesn't work. And of course Sigma's going to start up with the cat puns again. Him and his nine lives. He kinda has a litter tick. And we have now found a conversion plug that turns massive prongs into three small prongs. Because that is just a little too obvious. <coughs> the power supply must be restarted to unlock the door. So, let's go plug that in. Violet, white, blue, red. Yeah, the prongs don't make sense. Well, we've done that. Nope, okay. Actually, I have to click things. And we now have a coin. And he must have gotten a really good deal on these coins, because he uses them everywhere. And a remote control. We want to push the button? Yep. Hell, oh, that was lackluster. Anyway. We have a coin now. And what do you use coins for in games like these? Use them to unscrew. The door would unlock after we restart the power supply. Hmm, the reset button doesn't work. And we can flip the lights around all we want. Which means now that 
this side is dark, we cannot actually do anything over here or in the lockers. There we go. Now that we've turned the power on to this half of the room, we can actually drain the... Actually drain the place. Look in here. Grab ourselves a start button with a little... With a singular little tab right there. Fully submerge the power supply in water to restart. And we need a key to open this room. with a water tank in here. Yeah, being hopeful for Coffee would not be a bad thing here. Yeah, it's not good to keep aquariums in the bathroom. It definitely is not. So a standard bucket. Which Sigma immediately puts on his head and starts talking into. Because he's Sigma. So now that we've got a bucket, that looked like water to me. So now I have a bucket of water. Bucket of water. And now... Nope. Just splashing water on this thing will not be enough to actually get the door to open. But it did get us a funny shaped key there. So now that we have done that, we come back over here, turn off the lights, use the key on the door. And now we have a hose that we can use to transport water or blow air. So now I believe comes the part that really, really frustrated me the first time I played this. Getting it to actually work. Nope, that's not the part that frustrated me. Not yet. Or 
We're not quite to that part yet. And with the lights off. Okay, that's it. One, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this, we've seen something like this before. This one is only slightly more difficult because it's multiple pictures. That's right. Okay. But it's still not exactly terrible. Yeah, they do like to recycle the puzzles just a bit. And now we have a normal screwdriver instead of just the coin that we lost, apparently. Apparently we could not hold on to the coin. But with screwdriver in hand. This is what annoyed me. Because it's very, very picky about how you attach this hose. Because for the longest time I just thought you had to do one side, then the other, etc, etc, etc. No. No, that's not the answer. It would be nice, but it is not the answer. Because I know I'm missing something. Yeah, that's what I need to do. That's it. The thing I almost forgot about. I spent a good 20 minutes trying different combinations to get the sync and the, uh, or to get that music box lined up with the freaking hose because it makes sense, but, you know. Okay, so then... Now that we've got the C-shaped piece. Hey, Ren. That 
Diana likes this song. Uh huh. You're singing. Open it. Fill the room with water. Now we must fill the room with water. And this is going to be the most difficult thing we've done yet. Or the simplest, because it just kind of happens for us. So anyway, yeah, the room is now going to fill up with water. So we sit here, and we have, basically, we have to actually fill up the room to get the, to get the, uh, power box underwater to open the door. Only now, the water is pouring out in here, but the drain is open. Yes. And now that we've submerged the box... It is now very dark in here. But... Notice he didn't say what door would open. Why is there a door here? I was right. This door isn't marked on the map. Hmm. It won't open? Nope. It's locked up tight. Looks like you need to put a code in here. Anything come to mind? <sighs> All I can tell is that it's an eight-digit number. An eight-digit number? Now see, the thing is... I know the code. But the thing is... We haven't seen the code in this playthrough yet. So, I could try entering in the correct code. I could, just to see if it would actually let us progress in the game. But, I haven't tried that out just, you know, just because yet. And I really don't want to go through this part of the game, the following part. If uh, we haven't seen where we get the code from. So, because, you know, let's play things somewhat in order. Anyway, we do not know the code. Nope. Nope. We get three tries, three fails. I'm sorry. I can't think of anything. Wonder if there are any hints around here. Nope. Hints. Hints. So yeah, we have hit the first of many things in this game to where we're going to have to play... play on, find the code in a different timeline and come back to it.
I can't remember why. Yeah, it's gonna trap me in this. But we can now jump over here. Because if you recall, this is where we decided to transport. And funny thing about the transporter. Remember, it was a 3D printer and not an actual teleporter. So, uh, yeah. This isn't going to work the way they hope. Or the way Sigma hoped. At least not for Sigma Prime here. What in the world is going on? We went into the input pods, and now we came right back out of the same ones. But not the export pods. Demon Skype. Did the process fail? No, wait. Hold on a sec. Let me think about this for a minute, okay? Yeah, I get it now. You understand what happened? Remember what Zero said. This transporter isn't one that simply teleports various objects. What is transporter is only the atomic data. The object itself does not get transported. Now you remember. I remember one time with my grandma years ago. The first time she sent me a fax, she said, The paper came back, Sigma. Maybe it didn't go through successfully. So did it's you same really thing. bring up fancy fax machine? Just like how the fax doesn't send the actual Based on paper, this, or did you just forget and just said fax machine? Our original bodies remain. And only the red data went to the transfer point? But there's one thing I don't get. Why is this me? The one that's. Yeah, I know you've seen it before. If our data did end up transferring correctly, it wouldn't have been a surprise to see we were in the transfer point world. So, why are we still here? <sighs> Sorry. Because we aren't going no, anywhere with this, this machine. Out. Other me. It's clearly an esoteric conundrum. Even after thinking extensively on it, I do need to play sure Soma. I figure it out. But I do know one thing for sure. It's hard. We've run out of cards in our deck. Now you got plenty more. See, they're all over the floor. Okay, so we have one more room left in this particular batch of rooms, but before we do that, I'm going to take a quick break, because I really need to use the restroom. <laughs> 